Young Milo was all excited and he hopped in the car after school. We're going to have a look at that. Oh, glorious day. Yeah. So we've got a computer that's actually working, I think. So that'll be good. Do I need to stall more? This is called padding if you're um, in, in television land and church land. <laughs> Yes, 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 if you'd like to make your way to the back too. Mm. I know a church that does that. I don't know how they get them back. They, so now would be coffee time, and they all go Classic and have... Classic roll, is that? Oh, Classic we're there. Roll. We've got to go back um, a bit. Can we go and start again? That's all right. Oh, it'll be bang, out, uh, out the door. Thank you. Have a watch at Young Milo. Do I need That's what I am familiar with Sunday school. I'm a classic one. Classic role, is it? Classic part. Yeah. Um, Joseph. No. Uh, one of the three wise men. No. One of the innkeepers. No. Um, but it's a classic part. Yeah. Okay. Um, you tell me then, because. I'm door holder number three. I'll be holding doors. That's amazing. Holding doors for who? Um, probably um, Joseph and Mary. Oh my gosh, were you pleased when they said that? Yeah, and, and, and I'd like to just, I'm a door holder, get in there, let's go, yes. <laughs> Whoa. And, and, and maybe because there's no room, I'd probably be the, they'd be like just coming in and then I'd just slam the, mate, slam the door in their face. <laughs> Is that your star role? I don't think you're going to be a door. I think you're going to be a door holder. No, I'll have to wear like gowns. Really? Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. Well, that's really smart, Milo. Uh, beautiful. Young Milo has gone viral around the world. Churches are showing it. He was on uh, breakfast television in England. If you it was lost in translation, so I'm glad there were some subtitles for you who maybe couldn't have heard what was going on. But he's door holder number three. No job is too small. Amen. No job is too insignificant. Everyone is needed. Everyone can play a part. And this morning we have honoured a number of you because everyone is important and everyone is needed every day and every week. You might think you're just washing a cup in the kitchen, but that's as important as me standing here or emptying a rubbish bin or cutting up a pumpkin or watermelon or taking a phone call or visiting a friend who's sick or going to the hospital, or you've missed someone who hasn't been here for a couple of weeks, so you gave them a call to see what was going on. Every job is important, and everyone is needed. Father God, I thank you that this Christmas season, we will be reminded once again that you have indeed come. Let us again discover you as we look into the manger and see again our Saviour, Emmanuel, God with us. We embrace the good news. We embrace the joy. We embrace the marvel of Christmas and the amazing miracle. In Jesus' name, amen. It's my Christmas message, part one, because I'm about that creative this time of year. So it'll be part two next week. On the screen there, Luke 2.10. Some shepherds were minding their own business. Angel appears to them. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy. For all people. Good news. Great joy for all people. Maybe this morning you come with some questions. 
Maybe you have some concerns or worries. Jesus has come. Maybe a question we can't answer. Maybe a situation that seems unfair. Maybe you feel a bit lonely or hurt. Let God bring the answer. Let God bring some clarity. Let God restore our hope again. An only God moment this Christmas time. Remember Mary in Luke 1. I'm sure she had a question or 20. How will this be? How will this be? She asked the angel. Since I am a virgin. Imagine the millions of things going on in her mind. But the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Who's glad God has a way and God has an answer and God has a plan and God has a solution that may seem unimaginable, miraculous, marvelous. But by the way, Mary, your cousin Elizabeth, verse 36 even, Elizabeth, we like to call her, <laughs> your relative is going to have a child in her own age. There's more, more miracles, more amazement, more wonder. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. Have you had a word from God? A promise you're hoping for. Something he needs to fulfill. He makes the impossible possible. Opens doors and makes a way. Restores and heals. He helps and cares and provides and meets us along the cross roads of life. It's 1914. It's World War, World War I, and they're in the trenches, and a familiar song rings out. Let's watch that. My name is Jim. My name is Otto. 
Frohe Weihnachten. well documented that that actually happened. It might have been a little bit different. But there, they took a moment to meet and to shake hands amongst the horrors of war. They found some peace. In Matthew 28, Verse 17, Jesus is about to leave. He's risen from the dead. It's his, his final instructions. And in verse 17, when they saw him, they worshipped him. <coughs> but some still doubted. They doubted his birth. They doubted his death. They doubted the resurrection, the holy child, our resurrected Lord. Come and worship him again this Christmas time. Continue to share the story. Share the truth of Christmas, the hope that brings us great joy. The strongest faith isn't a faith that never doubts. The strongest faith is a faith that goes th grows through our doubt and our fear. Romans 15, 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Be filled with joy and peace as we trust in Him. God is present in our pain. God is not distant from our doubt. In Matthew 18.3, Jesus and the disciples, and he says, I tell you, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like a little child, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Yesterday we had Thurlow Christmas as Jack and Emily and, and Theodore uh, head to Tassie uh, this week and have time with Jack's family and Theodore got presents and he's opening things and carrying things around and full of joy and, and excitement. But he's more interested in carrying around a teaspoon and a piece of Christmas wrapping paper. That was it. Too bad about the bike and the plastic thing and this other thing and, <laughs> and whatever else. But he, he, he got joy out of the teaspoon and the bit of Christmas wrapping paper. Get joy out of the simple things, eh? Don't lose sight of a childlike faith and wonder and surrender. The message is clear. 
good news, joy for all people. And we are those people, aren't we, have received that good news. In Romans 10, 9, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Friends, we openly declare our faith week in, week out, and again at this Christmas time. Look once again into that manger and let us discover the Saviour. A quote from Craig Rochelle up on the screen there. The strongest faith isn't a faith that never doubts. It's a faith that grows through your doubts. God with us. God with me. God with you. The hope of the world. Jesus, the king on a manger throne. Amen. Some people have asked me about our uh, Christmas offering. So that will go to Coco, and these are the offering envelopes which are up on the back table. So next Sunday, these will go into the offering bag and also our general offering. If you want to write Coco on an offering, en on an envelope, just a plain envelope, it'll still go there, but you can give the way you normally give, but also uh, our part of our offering will go to Coco if that's how you want to give next Sunday, which will be very good. Now, tonight it's going to be a bit warm. If you've got a spare air conditioner that you could uh, fit um, between the hours of uh, 12 and 4, that would be nice. If you've got some pedestal fans, that would be very nice. We're going to bring a couple of them in. That would be really good. If you've got some, don't know where I'll plug them in, but we'll, we'll bring work something. What else would you like? Oh, Renee wants a carport. Oh, 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 for the hailstorm. Yes, yeah, so if you can help us out, that would be good. And following our service and last song, we'll have morning tea. And